Welcome back to The Mining Pod. On today's show, we're joined by Marco Taman of NiceHash. We discuss how it operates, solo miners finding blocks on NiceHash, and why operators might want to sell hash rate into a marketplace. Introducing the newest and most requested course from Foundry Academy, Intro to Hashboard Diagnosis and Repair, offered by the same experts who provided top technical training for mining technicians in the U.S. This Essential Academy course will take place in Rochester, New York, from May 1st to the 5th, 2023. With a strong focus on mastering microsoldering basics, Foundry's dedicated instructors possess years of ASIC hardware experience and will guide you through each step of the process. They'll ensure that you gain the confidence and skills required to undertake basic repair jobs and keep your operation healthy and hashing. Register today at foundryacademy.com. Welcome back to the Mining Pod. Today we're joined by Marco Taman. He is the lead mining operations manager at NiceHash. NiceHash, of course, has a special place within the mining community. It's one of the long-standing places you can go rent, buy, or sell hash rate to open marketplace on the internet and maybe earn some Bitcoin. Uh, Marco, thank you so much again for joining today. Thanks for having me. So we have a great place to begin the conversation, and that is this week a solo miner who is renting hash rate from NiceHash actually scored a singular block uh, earned about $148,000 in rewards for, you know, just renting a few hours or a few days worth of work from the net from you guys. Um, explain that to me. Uh, this is this is a pretty cool story because we always love to celebrate the, these single block winners because they don't that they have really big odds against themselves. They're essentially winning a huge lottery. Yeah, uh, I would say that that hasn't happened the first time, but it was probably one of the first time that the buyer actually came out and explained how he did it. I think he rented like 6.7 pentahash, which is what uh, he said. And there were buyers doing that before, but they were using, let's say, solar mining pools or their private pools, actually. Uh, a buyer can set up their own pool, buy hash rate through nice hash. It's on demand. Uh, they can get it in a couple of seconds. Uh, and they start mining with it. That's actually something similar uh, the buyers did back uh, with Ethereum uh, because they could see the big block of transactions coming up. There was a lot of transaction fees in that block, so they would use nice hash to get that on-demand hash rate in that moment and try to hit a block. Uh, and that's what they, because of that, they were willing to pay premium price on that hash rate because they knew that the block had, let's say, 30% more uh, block reward reward because of the transaction fees. And they were willing to pay approximately, let's say 30 or 25% more than that average uh, price. Uh, and because that was happening on a, let's say, regular basis, the miners at the end of the day were paid more. And similar is happening right now on Shahar, SHA-256. Our buyers are trying to mine that solar block and they're willing to pay premium price for that probability of getting the hash rate and hitting a block. Gotcha. Yeah, this is the story that we're linking to uh, from Decrypt says that this miner was based in Russia, and I think they only had, let's see, 270 tear hash before they rented five penta hash for this. Yeah. Um, you know, so they had essentially like two or three S19s or enough to get up to that, and they rented yeah. from you guys. Tell me about the renting side of that. So uh, I'm assuming just from like a marketplace standpoint, you purchase uh, the amount of hash rate you want and then the cost is based over time. So how much would it cost generally for this person to, you know, rent 6.7 pit hash? Price is set by the buyers. So the buyers are competing against each other, outbidding each other for that hash rate. So let's say there is approximately 2x a hash available right now on nice hash. And if there comes a buyer who says, I want to buy it all, he has to outbid every other buyer. So a good example would be, let's say, I'm willing to pay three Bitcoins per X a hash per day. Not just the hash price index you're probably familiar with, but just a unit of price. I get all that hash rate. Then you come and you say, I'm willing to pay 3.1 Bitcoins per X a hash, and you outbid me in real time. And in that real time, nice hash moves uh, all the miners that were mining for me to you. And you say, where do you want that hash rate to go? So let's say you're using like a pool or your private pool, whatever, that hash rate goes to that pool. Uh, then I say, I want to outbid you again. 
I set a price for let's say 3.2 bitcoins or exa hash per day and then I get the bitcoin uh, the hash rate again and we can just uh, like compete against each other until we get to that break even or like the breaking point that's awesome I love that marketplace uh let's go into it itself uh we'll leave that story in the background of course uh, a, a great way to like intro just the, the whole conversation is we love it when someone wins a, a money reward or a money block like that. Let's just begin talking about nice hash. Um, we should go walk me through the history of, how, of that nice hash itself. And then we'll dig into the conversation about like how a nice hash works and profit switching algorithms and maximizing payouts and stuff like that. But uh, a little background on nice hash for those who are not familiar would be awesome. Yeah. We were around since 2014 actually. So that's almost what, uh, will be 10 years next year so you can list me uh companies that are along uh here for that many so for that much time i think there's not many of them uh we are like the old guys already uh and basically the core product has always been the hash hash power marketplace so we started i think with script algorithm and the second one was sha 256 uh and since then we've allowed uh buyers to buy that hash rate nice hash is also a vertically integrated company so working on other products also we support asic mining gpu mining uh there's more than 30 different algorithms to sell hash rate just going through the history books for a second here i'm curious about the ethereum merge and how that sort of changed your guys's marketplace for for hash rate obviously there's lots of Altcoin mining is still out there. We talk about it every once in a while on the show. And ET Studio is still around. Ravencoin, those coins are around. But how did your guys' marketplace change when Ethereum merged? Before Ethereum merged, we had, I think, the 70% of uh, all the market of NiceHash was on Ethereum. So that was a big chunk of our revenue. Uh, we were expecting the decrease. But uh, let's say we should... We weren't focusing on ASICs back in the day because our main source of income was, were obviously like small time miners, uh, GPU miners, content creators with just one or maybe two GPUs. Uh, and I think there was approximately 20 or 30% of Ethereum hash rate on NiceHash. And that's what allowed the buyers do what they did uh, before, as, as I explained before, like buy the hash rate get a chance to hit that block. Uh, so yeah, after Ethereum merge, uh, obviously we were hit a little bit, but not that, not mu not that much because we still have uh, Bitcoin mining, Litecoin, uh, Dogecoin, and all the rest. There's still like 30 algorithms available. Gotcha. Well, thanks for that information there. Let's go into the, the product itself. Tell me about how NiceHash operates. Um, then later down the conversation, we'll talk about liquidity with, with how your marketplace works. Um, I think that'd be interesting to kind of go back and talk about the Ethereum side of things as you guys did see a drop off in hash rate from, uh, from Ethereum miners. But let's start with that part of the conversation first. Tell me a little bit about how nice hash operates. And uh, basically what we do is that we connect, let's say millions of miners with a couple hundred, couple of thousands of buyers. And these buyers start off by depositing uh bitcoins to nice hash and uh, then they decide to uh what algorithm they will buy uh, what hash power for what algorithm uh and then they set a price they log the bitcoins for that order let's say hypothetically i want to spend uh one bitcoin for one exa hash that means that i'm gonna get a hash rate for about eight hours and in eight hours if i get if i outbid all the rest buyers I will get that hash rate and in these eight hours uh balance the balance the one bitcoin i locked in that order will slowly get deducted so if i decide to cancel the order in the middle of uh time so in four hours i will get that half bitcoin back there's no fixed uh, pay rate you can change the price of that order so essentially what nicehash allows you to do compared to cloud mining is to manipulate the order. With cloud mining, you buy a contract for let's say one month for 100 penta hash, and you cannot change the price, neither the hash rate you're getting. And that means that if Bitcoin, dro Bitcoin price drops or the 
difficulty increases, you're losing money. Uh, on the other hand, the seller might be losing mine, money, the mining farm, because someone is always losing money with uh, cloud mining. But NiceHash, on the other hand, allows you to manipulate these orders. And as I, I said before, the buyer will, are, the buyers are really smart people. Uh, they're do they're doing like wild stuff with that hash rate. They have that option to manipulate the order. And that's the, the main main uh, benefit of NiceHash over everyone else. And as the order progresses, the buyer is getting shares from the seller. He doesn't know the, who the seller is, and he doesn't know who the seller doesn't know who the buyer is. So they don't know each other. Everything is done automatically by NiceHash, mm. uh, by our service, and. As the miner is sending a share towards NiceHash to the buyer and to the pool that uh, the, the buyer used, each share he's getting paid for. So it's like true PPS where miner is getting paid for each and every share. And as he gets paid, the money from the seller, from the buyer, sorry, is being deducted. So as, as I mentioned before, that one Bitcoin, as I get a share, uh, the money is deducted from my, let's say, locked order. Or so this is like true benefit also for a miner, because just uh, not long ago I heard about a pool that had really bad bad luck, uh, and there was a farm that lost like twenty percent of what they're supposed to get, something like that. I'm not sure, uh, because of luck of luck, you know, if a pool has ten exa hash, that means uh, they're gonna get every thirty thirty uh, block. On statistically, but it can happen that they're gonna get like every fifty block. The miner has that risk of not getting the reward. But on nice hash, the buyer is taking over that risk because the buyer will will either get the block reward or not. And, but he will have to pay for that hash rate. And the miner will always get paid by the price set by the. Uh, by all the orders on the hash rate marketplace. Let's say hypothetically there's 100 orders on the nice hash. There's like a order book of all the orders and only the top 10 will get fulfilled. Uh, because the top 10 uh, hash rate that they want to get is 2 exa hash. And the uh, 11th will be waiting for that hash rate. As soon as there's enough hash rate that either a new mining farm connects a new miner connects on ice hash, the, the the orders that are waiting will get fulfilled. Or if this, let's say the first order is completed or cancelled, or uh, the buyer decreases the amount of hash rate they want, the next order in line will get fulfilled. Does that make sense? No, that's great. Tell me a little bit about the the buyer side and the sell side. We just kind of break up these two these two groups. You said the the buying side often you're seeing wild things with what people are doing with this hash rate. Um, tell me a little bit about the profit switching and, and the buy side of things. You're mentioning how uh, the buyers are really the ones informing the sell side of things and do a lot of the work for the buyers. How is that? Yeah, the buyers are the brains behind uh, NiceHash. There's multiple coins on, let's say, SHA-256 algorithm. Multiple coins that use the same algorithm. So there's Bitcoin, there's the space coin I've been talking about, there's Bitcoin SV, Bitcoin, not cash, but like other coins using that algorithm. And the buyers, they will notice if it's more profitable to, main, to mine another coin, another project. And they will direct that hash rate to that project. Let's say uh, Bitcoin SV. Technically, bit, mining Bitcoin SV uh, pays out more for the buyer. And they will do that thinking for the miners. But the buyers will always have to deposit the bitcoins to NiceHash too. And the bitcoins are means of transfer. That could be dollars, potatoes for like, but it's not practical, bitcoins are. So the buyers will pay the seller in bitcoin always. That's the first layer of switching. And with GPU mining, there was a second layer of switching where the GPUs were switching between different algorithms. So you would have uh, uh, ETHash algorithm, you would have uh, let's say, key heavy hash algorithm and another algorithms. So that would be the first layer of switching. Then on each of these algorithms, there are multiple projects using that algorithm. So let's say you're mining ETHash, uh, ET 
the miner on key heavy hash will set up hyping order and miners for, from ETH hash will switch to key heavy hash. So there's like double layer uh, profit switching. Gotcha. So just to sort of summarize and clarify here, the buyers have the ability to look at hash price and weigh it against a different coin's current hash price. And if the hash price of a different coin than Bitcoin is higher, they'll swap over to that uh, that hash instead. And then the yep. uh, sell side gets a little bit more income because of it as well, while the buyer also profits. Exactly. Gotcha. The one thing I was curious, I'm curious about there is the Ethereum stuff. Which obviously, yeah, it doesn't really matter anymore because they transition. But uh, the point that you made that certain ethereum miners would or people wanting to buy ethereum hash rate rather would go and try to snag a singular block and i'm assuming you're referring to minor extractable value where you're trying to see the transactions on a certain block get that hash rate control that block and extract that value was that a service you guys saw quite often on nice hash i'm not exactly sure how often this happened uh because we don't really track details about it uh, but we just knew that this was this is something that the buyers did. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, we do, we don't uh, NiceHash doesn't interfere in the marketplace, so we leave it like let's say decentralized. Uh, yeah, we leave we leave to uh, we leave it for the market to do whatever the market does. So like the invisible hand, uh, mm -hmm. it does everything. Yeah, I'm curious to see if that develops more with the. Uh with the possible changes of MEV on Bitcoin with the um, debut of inscriptions and ordinals and possibly roll-ups at some certain point and maybe a lighting as well. So uh, definitely something to keep an eye on. Let's move over to the sell side of things and talk about who are the sellers. Uh, you mentioned that there could be just like individual farms. Uh, maybe in some cases, there's just a few people who just want to you know, sell off their hash rate. Curious who, who those seller groups are. There's, again, multiple types of sellers. We probably have every type of miner on NiceHash. You can start with CPU miners. Uh, they're uh, selling hash rate for Randomix, for Monero. Uh, then you have GPU miners. Uh, they're selling currently probably with key heavy hash, Caspa coin. Uh, there's more miners with one GPU uh, just heating up their like uh, household. There's professional GPU miners. But as you are aware, the GPU mining site hasn't been really profitable right now, so there's less of them. Uh, and we also have ASIC miners. There's big mining farms, there's uh, individual miners with ASICs. We don't really care. Uh, as long as you connect hash rate, you can do it freely without any user accounts, KYC, or whatever. For the miner itself, the user experience is identical to mining top. So you use like a nice hash stratum address, uh, worker name that, uh, sorry, Bitcoin wallet address dot worker name and password is X and that's all you need to start mining. It's like a couple of seconds. Gotcha. So let's go back to the liquidity topic from earlier in the conversation. I'm curious to know uh, how the marketplace liquidity changed for uh, SHA-256 specifically after the Ethereum merge, because you said that Ethereum was about 70% of your marketplace and then the merge occurred and you guys lost all that. Did you see like an influx of SHA-256 miners coming to NiceHash or has like the relative amount of hash rate available on NiceHash remained pretty pretty steady since then? Yeah, the hash rate is growing. Uh, in January, we had one exahash. We're approaching two exahash right now. We're trying to onboard uh, bigger farms. And uh, for now, it might have grown like uh, naturally because if you check what to mine, NiceHash is always the most paying uh, service, not a pool, uh, over mining Bitcoin directly through a pool. And that's just because I explained before the buyers are willing to pay more and we're seeing more miners why wanting to sell hash rate through NiceHash because they're getting like 5 to 10% more uh, than any other pool. Yeah, I'm curious, a uh, follow-up question here on like the, I guess I don't know the correct phrasing for it, but maybe you'll understand anyways, like the margins here for uh, a buyer or a seller, like how close to the market equivalent for a set of TerraHash are we getting? Are, th are things fairly competitive? Uh, so for example, if I went to go buy 
a hash rate derivative that gives me a, a set of hash rate over time. How similar in pricing are we talking between nice hash and a hash rate derivative? Or if I just have my own hash rate itself? You can earn more with nice hash uh, by approximately 5 to 10%. It's important to stress out that nice hash doesn't pay because the, the buyers are paying the sellers. We're just a broker, a guy in between. So yeah, the difference jumps obviously up and down all the time because the buyers are bidding. So uh, let's say the highest bid, uh, highest pink order uh, is filled out. And then for a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes, uh, that order is not paying above that break even price. But just sooner or later, a new buyer comes and sets up a premium price for that order. And for like half a year, been paying again sorry we haven't been paying the buyers have been paying uh approximately five to ten percent more whatever the hash price index is so as you know the hash price index like uh, fluctuates all the time so yeah. does so does the pay rate on ice hash now that makes sense um i mean i'm just curious about like the how tight the market is which should be like a, a derivative of the liquidity of the marketplace yeah, Tell I mean, me. it, it, sorry, it happens that uh, the pay rate on Icehash was 40% higher. 40, mm -hmm. that's 40, not 14, but 40%, wow. yeah, 40% higher than mining Bitcoin directly. That was, uh, the first time it happened was in November. Uh, there was a buyer that was solo mining and, you know, he, he caught a couple of blocks. We think so. Uh, yeah, and then he did... Uh, he bought a lot of hash rate, you know, yeah. and with that hash rate, uh, he, he, with that premium price, he went about uh, like 40% above that break even price. Uh, and lastly, it was, I think about a month ago that the pay rate was 36% higher for a couple of hours. Uh, and as far as I know, there was a new coin on the, on SHA-256, it's called Space Something. Uh, and there was, there was another buyer who was paying, uh, I mean, the pay rate went up to 10 bitcoins per exa hash. The uh, current, current hash price index is about three bitcoins per exa hash. Yeah. Wow. Tell me a little bit about on the business development side, when you guys are going out to mining farms, I mean like, Hey, you should work with nice hash. We want you to provide, uh, uh the supply side for our marketplace. What's the pitch to these guys? Because ostensibly, if you're paying out five to ten percent higher on the buy side, then the sell side might be losing out here. Uh, so, what's the pitch to them? And am I incorrect in that understanding? The sell, the supply, the miners, they're getting paid more. So, oh, so okay. five to okay. ten percent more. Yeah. Okay. They are they are the ones that get paid more, not the the buyer. The buyer has to do do all the hard thinking. They are the brains behind everything and they make decisions to what will they're gonna mine uh when will they buy, buy more hash rate because they're smart they do the hard thinking for the seller for the miner mm. uh, and the miner is just getting paid more and our like biggest sell point is that miners on nice hash are getting paid about five to ten percent more so why do we see day. uh that's a, it makes for a clarifying that i misunderstood you from earlier why don't we see like a, a larger influx of miners to nice hash necessarily, or is that sort of the spurring on? You said you're increasing from one X hash to two X hash pretty soon here, but I would think that like a lot of miners would want to jump into nice hash in that in that sense. Yeah, uh, as I mentioned before in the past, we'll be only focusing on retail users, so small time miners with one GPU, two GPUs, and we really didn't have to focus on you know ASIC side of thing. Uh, if anyone wanted to connect, they did. That was the first thing. So not many miners are aware that they can sell SHA-256 hash rate through NiceHash. I've been going around at conferences and I've talk, been talking to miners and, hey guys, I've been using you in 2017, 16 with my GPU. I started mining back then with you. And right now they're using, they're like big mining farm operators and they don't know that they can use uh, NiceHash for selling hash rate. Yeah. So we're doing at active, we're actively, sorry, we're actively working on this, uh, trying to spread the awareness about nice hash. It's also ASIC mineable. And the other thing is that, uh, 
the majority of buyers were conventional buyers. As, so these buyers try to do arbitrage trading with the hash rate. Uh, but in September, we launched a new product, which helps solar miners uh, to solar mine, basically. And we've been doing like uh, these packages of hash rate that they can use for solar mining. And these packages are uh, premium priced because they have to outbid conventional buyers. Otherwise, they won't get the hash rate. Uh, and since September, uh, average theoretical pay rate was about 5.5% higher than anyone else. Uh, mm. But again, this is theoretical data. We're running tests of two ASICs head to head, one on Icehash, one on Bitcoin pool. And the actual difference is I think around 9% right now in the past four weeks. All right. So last question for you as we, as we look to close out the show, I'm curious what you think about competition within this landscape. So I did mention ha hash rate derivatives earlier. We've had the Luxor team on here, which launched a hash rate derivative, I believe, in the fall. Uh, enables you to go and purchase a set amount of hash rate into a future order date, and they do a back-end swap and OTC deal. Uh, there's things like uh, DeFi with hash rate, where you're able to go use a smart contract and purchase hash rate from uh, a smart contract. It's an interesting and evolving landscape where I think we're going to see a lot of different marketplaces for hash rate how does nice hash compete in a world where we see more of these competitors pop up nice hash offers on demand hash rate nice hash doesn't offer uh like futures or hash rate futures or like contracts for uh, let's say one year of hash rate uh, and as i said before someone with cloud mining is always losing money so if it's either the seller the mining farm who sets a price for exa hash, let's say they set a price for four bitcoins. Right now, they might be making uh, money, more money than mining. But let's maybe in two weeks, or two months, the bitcoin price increases, and the actual hash price will be five bitcoin. And because they have a contract with the buyer, they will be losing uh, that difference between four and five bitcoins per exa hash. Uh, or on the other hand, the buyer of that, or like the the buyer of contract, will be losing money because he has a contract for, let's say, one year, and he bought it at four Bitcoins per extra, per extra hash for day for all that time. He cannot change the price or the amount of hash rate he's getting. And uh, if the Bitcoin price uh, drops, he's going to be losing money. So with this cloud mining core, uh, like hash rate futures, someone is always losing money. So someone is taking that risk. Uh, with, but with nice hash, uh, a buyer, can manipulate these orders. So if he sees a uh, difficult increase, you will either uh, lower the price or cancel the order. Uh, if he sees a uh, Bitcoin price increase, he can go higher, <coughs> sorry, higher with the price uh, to compete against other buyers. So it's it's a live marketplace. Um, I, hope, I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Like, no, that did the, make sense. What's the real difference? Uh, yeah. Nice hash, hash power marketplace and hash rate derivatives or futures or cloud mining it's, it's quite a similar thing perfect well we'll leave the conversation there marco where can people find you online twitter or a blog or somewhere else i'm mostly active on linkedin uh they can find me there i think that would be the best place to reach out to me i'm also on telegram everything else than twitter i'm not on twitter a rare person not on Twitter and Bitcoin. I love that. <laughs> cool. Marco, again, thank you so much for your time today. We look forward to speaking again with you soon. Have a good one. Thank you for having me.